Welcome to Money Talk with Tiff, a podcast where we discuss everything money from tips and tricks to current events. Follow me on my journey to become debt free and meet other cool people along the way. I am your host, Tiffany Grant. Now let's talk money. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Today, all the way from the UK, I have Pauline Malubai, who went from grappling with imposter syndrome, which I know we have all experienced, and anxiety in the corporate world, to becoming the CEO of her own business, Growth Agency. Her passion lies in empowering visionaries with strategy, coaching, and implementation support so they can be unstoppable. Combining her experience in Fortune 500 companies, She now helps others on her own time, on their, mm, sorry. Combining her experience in Fortune 500 companies, she now helps others own their time, wealth, and joy in life. Exactly the type of person I like to talk to. Hey, Pauline, how are you? (laughs) I love it. Thank you for the introduction. I am well. I am very well. I'm also, I've got a little bit of a cold, so I may sound a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) You're fine. And I may sound a little bit, a little bit rusty because this is my first time on the mic in probably about a month. Um, (laughs) So thank you so much for being on the show like so let's just hop right in because you're a business strategist coach and all those good things and there's something very 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 important that I wanted to hit on today and that is pricing right Um, when it comes to entrepreneurs it is so hard for us to price correctly Um, and I speak for myself (laughs) in this um, because like I still struggle with pricing to this day. Like I've had friends and family say, Tiffany, you're not charging enough. Tiffany, you're not charging enough. And ironically, I just had a friend on Facebook. um, She was just talking about pricing um, because she sells meals. Okay. And she said she did like a throwback Thursday and Back in 2017, she was only charging $2 a plate. Oh my gosh. (laughs) $2 a plate. And so, you know, for some reason, this is something that we all struggle with. So what are your views? Like, why do we struggle with this? Yeah. So honestly, pricing is so personal. And regardless of, you know, what your price is at the moment and what people have told you, I'm not here to price shame because everyone's got div- different lifestyles. They um, live in different places in the world where, you know, there's uh, demographic arbitrage. So I can be living like a queen in um, Southeast Asia in my with my what I'm earning right now. But in, in Cambridge, in the UK, where it's quite expensive, it's basically like London living price. It's not queen lifestyle, you know. <laughs> so I'm not here to price shame. Like, but what I've found is that Pricing is personal and therefore it's a lot to do with how you feel about yourself. And it's always a little bit difficult because I don't like the advice of price um, your worth, you know, price what you're worth or something like that. And I I always think, no, because like you are not your business, right? And, you know, I like the advice of price the value that you give to your client, but also be practical because people will always be paying above the market and lower than the market. You will always get the price objection. And a lot of where you place yourself in between those different, the the spectrum of that is to do with how you feel about yourself and your self-worth. Most of the time is what I found. And I work with a lot of women and we are perfectionist, meaning that we, well, this is just generally speaking. I'm sure that a lot of women are very, very not perfectionist, but generally speaking, um, we are socialized in a patriarchal world where you know, we are always measuring ourselves up to an ideal that we cannot reach. And it happens so much in business. The end, endless times I've heard clients say to me, oh, I can't charge that much. I've only been doing this for X, Y, Z, you know, years. Or I can't price that much. I haven't even got this X, Y, Z certification. But they still get those results with clients. And I always tell them, you know, how is this doing you any good if you are getting yourself burnt out you're over um, stretching yourself over delivering and then realizing that you're not actually uh, living the life that of your dreams right which is the whole point of running a business it's freedom to live a life of our dreams yeah exactly and I mean let's lean into that really quick because 
you, like you were speaking to me um, <laughs> <laughs> just um, not too long ago because like I don't have a background in finance. I never worked in finance. Um, you know, I, I always taught myself about money. But other than that, I didn't have any certifications or anything. And when I started this business, I was in HR, which is which has nothing to do with personal finance. And so back when I first started and people started asking me to become clients, I was like, OK, um, first I started with twenty dollars. <laughs> I was charging people twenty dollars an hour. Um, and then, you know, as people started getting results, I'm like, well, Tiffany, maybe you do know what you're talking about. Like, even though I knew I knew what I was talking about, it being that I didn't have those certifications or I didn't have that background, I was like, I can't possibly charge people an arm and a leg because I don't have anything to back it up, even though I knew I had the knowledge, you know what I mean? And so I struggled with that for a very, very long time. And yes, people who are getting meetings out of me for $20. And I mean, I was changing lives. And so th then I finally went up to what, $50? <laughs> I went to $50 a month <laughs> at that. And then, um, you know, I gradually started increasing my prices as demand increased, right? And so, because I was like, like you said, if you don't, you'll run yourself ragged um, because everybody will hop on the bandwagon if you're cheap. And then what that does for you is you start getting burned out. You start hating what you're doing, <laughs> which is the complete opposite of what you're trying to accomplish as an entrepreneur and a business owner. There's been a few times where I was like, you know what, I'm just about to go back to corporate. <laughs> I'm just tired of doing this. Um, and so everything you just said hit the nail on the head. It's all tied to self-esteem and it's all tied to what you believe that you can do, you know, when it comes to whatever industry it is that you're in. And I also just want to point out, it's not just women either right I um my husband he has a business where you know he went to school for video production so he makes videos for people and I get on him now you know and <laughs> this is like um me trying to preach to the choir right but I'm just like hey you know you're not charging enough for this like this is a lot of work because I see how many hours he puts in not only with shooting the video, but then afterwards, um, when you get into pro production and um, editing and things like that, and I'm like, and you're only charging how much? <laughs> like, it's not making sense. So I just wanted to bring that up as well. Like men struggle with this too. And it's all tied to, and, and mind you, he has the background. Okay. So, so it's like, what's the problem here? Like what other issues are coming up to coming up and coming to play as to why people aren't charging? Yeah. A lot of it, like I said, like I mentioned already is the self-esteem. A lot of it is um, comparisonitis, right? Comparing yourself to other people and getting intimidated. And I always say to my clients, it doesn't matter that you're, I've had clients that are, have been doing their craft for the last 20 years and then they move online in the online space where it's the jungle out here, right? And there's so many other people that have the following and the marketing and the branding all set in stone and they get intimidated and they said, oh my God, like I can't charge as much as them. I, I'm just brand new to the space. And I said, yes, but you have 20 years experience and um, getting, I mean, Competitor research is one thing, but doing it too much to the point of that's detrimental and, and keeping you in fear is, is the worst. Sometimes when I'm speaking to a prospective client, I just tell them, yeah, this market is legit. You will make money. Don't do any competitor research because I know what you're going to do. You're going to get you're going to get in your head about it and you're going to get scared. And then you're not going to go out and get clients because you're going to be planning, 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 researching, researching, getting more and more fearful about the price. But the, at the end of the day, pricing is all about, you know, iteration. The more confidence you get, the higher you're going to raise your prices. And I always ensure that with all my clients, I help them through um, price increases. And I, I put it, it's almost like a milestone with working with me. Like within three months, we're going to raise your prices by this percentage. And honestly, people are going to fall off. You know, people are, you are going to keep up leveling. 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 version of yourself as a CEO and as your business grows, 
but you're going to elevate the clients. You're going to find the clients that really align with your values. And I hope that your values means also you getting paid, you know, what, what you want to be paid, what you, what you um, are, should be paid um, for the value you're bringing. And you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay with losing those clients who are just lose, who are just, you know, wanting the Walmart of whatever service you're, <laughs> you're doing and you're going to up level. So you become the Apple of whatever your um, service or product is. And, you know, that's so true. Like <laughs> me and my husband just had this conversation too. Like not everybody's your client, right? <laughs> and, you know, I had to learn that the hard way. All of those $50 a month people, none of them are my clients right now. Um, and you know why? It's because I decided to start charging what I was worth. And, um, and hold on, let me rephrase that because that's what we're taught, right? And that we just went over that. Um, <laughs> I started charging the value. <laughs> I know it's so easy to say the other one. <laughs> right. I'm going to say halfway the value because I, I still don't think I'm there yet, but I started charging halfway the value <laughs> of what I'm, I'm providing to people. And they were like, oh, you know, I just had one of those clients come back to me not too long ago. And she's like, hey, Tiffany, I want to, you know, get back into financial coaching with you and this, that, and the other. And I said, just to let you know, my prices have increased. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> she kind of like fell off a little bit. And so I'm just like, you know, at the end of the day, like me and my husband talk about, we want supreme clientele. And when we say supreme clientele, we want the people that's not going to complain about how much we charge that actually see the value in what we're bringing to the table and don't mind paying it, <laughs> you know? Um, and so those are your customers. And that's what I have recently um, been preaching to people as well. It's like, not everybody's your customer and you shouldn't have to lower, you shouldn't. It's have, not, yeah, it's, what's that game where you like twist, twister, it's not twister. You don't have to twist your price right. to every client. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, if they don't want to pay what you're charging, then they need to find somebody else. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But a lot of times, you know, we start feeling bad. We're like, okay, well, maybe I'll just go ahead and give them a break. I'll just do it this one time. And then next thing you know, it's every time, you know? Um, so it, it's very easy as an entrepreneur to fall into that trap where, you're you have different pricing for everybody because you're trying to keep everybody as a client yeah absolutely and it's it's com I completely understand and I want to I want to just say to all the listeners here you know be kind to yourself being an entrepreneur is really hard and it's really hard when you're in the feast and famine stage it's like I'll just take any work because I need money but it's really important that you develop the habits of keeping to your word so that your reputation isn't tarnished and that people you basically teach your prospect clients and your clients um, how you want to be treated. You don't want to be that person who don't assert their boundaries or assert their boundaries, which is even worse, right? Assert their boundaries and then um, negates their boundaries or violates their own boundaries that they've set for their clients. You don't want to be that um CEO and we've all been there and it's you know and it's, it's an iterative you know learning curve as as all as you know building a small business is um but I want to give some advice on how you can improve how you feel about sales and pricing in general and um it's very similar to this is the very it's, it's the same advice that any you know therapist, psychiatrist, doctor will tell you about how to improve your self-esteem. And that's to really recognize what you're good at, which hopefully is your business or um, part of your business model. When you're really good at something, um, you tend to enjoy doing it and it will boost your mood. So if you're not doing that as your business and you know what you're good at and you know it can make money, <laughs> go and do that. Because um, you'll be much happier charging something you're really good at. And try to build up positive relationships from the very, very beginning. If you know that someone jumps on a sales call with you and they're, they're not, you know, they're very attached to their money. They're very attached to what they're about to invest. They're very, there's someone that you just don't align with 
on a values or a personal level, you know that your relationship is going to be rocky. It's very likely that you will not have the confidence to assert your own boundaries with them if you don't have that positive relationships already. And, you know, learn to be assertive, which doesn't mean be aggressive, right? Being assertive is a good thing because it means that you're respecting other people's opinions and needs and expecting the same from them. So, you know, it's not, it's not about pretending you're someone you're not in a sales school or you're better at something that when you're not, it's, you know, just being genuine and also expecting the other person to be genuine in what they, their needs are and how much money they can invest, but also to start saying no, like, and you've mentioned it's already Tiff, not everyone is your client. And if you start saying yes to everybody and you get burnt out, the perfect ideal client for you will end up, you know, you won't have space for them. And it's going to like, that's even worse. <laughs> so this happened to me very recently. Um, I had to say no to a new client. Um, after like a week of working together because I was just like so burnt out with them. So I said, okay, well, it's going to be fine. And then absolute dream client arrived. And I'm so busy with this dream client that I'm so happy I let go of the previous one. So saying no does not mean that you have to upset the relationship. You know, you can end on, on good terms. And I actually suggest that you never burn any bridges down with anyone. And I mentioned this already, but give yourself a challenge. Raise your prices once or twice a year, depending on your business model. Set yourself a goal of um, joining a mastermind and, you know, having other small business owners, you know, raise their prices at the same time as you. So you can all kind of cheer each other on. And the more you, in, you do price increases throughout the year, the more you will uplevel yourself as a CEO and also your business and the product suite that you're offering. Oh my gosh, you said so much. And it's like, <laughs> as you were talking, I'm like, oh, I want to hit on that. Oh, I want to hit on that. Yes, I'm going to shut up now. And you can, I just want it to be practical because, you know, listeners are like, oh, I, I don't know what's rising. So I'm like, let's give them what they need. <laughs> oh my gosh. But all of that is so true. Like, um, where do I even start? <laughs> let's, let's start with, um, you know, Saying no, okay, saying no, because that is a valuable skill that I have learned within the past, I'm gonna say year, right? And I've been in business for maybe four years now, four or five years, I can't remember exactly, but um, that's a valuable skill that I have learned over the past year because I used to just go and speak for free. OK, I'm just like, oh, I just need to get myself out there and, you know, this, that and the other, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Tiffany, you're already out there. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And so now I have um, made a policy within my company. And so, you know, most people don't know this, but I only do uh, one free speaking engagement every quarter. And I limited myself because I found myself doing all of these free speaking engagements. Because, of course, if you speak free, everybody wants you. <laughs> um, so I found myself overloading myself with free stuff to the point where I wasn't making any money, um, but I was getting burnt out and, and burned out really, really fast. So I was like, okay, I have to start charging. And really it was my um, career coach. Um, so when I was in corporate, I had a career coach a mentor and I asked her if she could be my PR person for my business now. I'm no longer in corporate, but, you know, now I'm an entrepreneur and I kind of need somebody that's like an in-between, okay? So she agreed, surprisingly, because <laughs> I was asking her to do something completely different, um, but she agreed. And it was, uh, so a client that I had always went to go do like free talks with, because it, it's a big you know, big deal around here. Right. And so I would always do free stuff for them. And after I bought her on and she became the intermediary, they started paying. And I'm just like, so all this time, all I had to do was ask. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's like, oh, like, my mind was blown. I'm like, I've done so many free speaking engagements for this particular customer. And all she did was say, hey, um, Tiffany charges and this is her price. And would you, you, you know, are you going to pay it or not? Pretty much. <laughs> and they decided that they wanted to pay it because they knew what value I was already going to bring to the table um, based on the previous experiences. So 
<sighs> I say that to say, please listen to Pauline. Please listen to Tiffany. <laughs> please, <laughs> please charge what you need, um, you know, as what you feel that you need for the services that you are providing. Because I had to explain to another customer that didn't want to pay still. Um, I said, you know, do, and she was working in corporate. I said, do you go to your job for free? I was like, <laughs> if your job said, hey, I want you to come in, but you know what? We're not going to pay you, but I want you to make sure that you provide the same quality that you do now, but we're just not going to pay you. And sh and I told her, I said, this is my job. <laughs> and so, you know, somebody asking me to come into my job and do it for free isn't fair if you wouldn't do the same thing with your job. And when I framed it like that, she said, oh, you know, I never thought about it like that. And I completely understand. I completely get it. And guess what? Now they're paying, right? Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes people forget that entrepreneurship, like when you are an entrepreneur, this is your job, you know? And so it's your duty to make sure that you get with what you're worth. Yes. It, it, it's crazy. I think um, a lot of people shy away from it because like you know about this it's there's there's a huge I don't know in the U.S. but in the U.K. British people we don't like to talk about money it's a very taboo subject which I don't understand it runs the world so I don't I never understand why people are very uncomfortable about speaking about money and all of that stuff and it's such a detriment to everyone's kind of personal finances and you know small business owners because you have to talk about money if you're asked to do something, there has to be a conversation of how you're going to be paid, right? It's not, it's not volunteering. And your anecdote was so spot on that sometimes uh, we really just have to teach people how to treat us, you know, in both business and personal life. Like, because some people, they just, I don't think they intend, some people I like to, you know, um, believe the best, but some people, they just, you know, some of them unintentionally, um, take you for granted or, you know, uh, overstep their boundaries. And it's up to you to assert it and to say, you know, this is not volunteering like you've just mentioned. And it can be a little bit uncomfortable. And this is why I said it, it ties back to self-esteem and self-worth in a lot of ways. Because if you're the kind of person who don't feel worthy, oh my goodness, you're never going to ask. You're never going to ask if you don't feel worthy of being paid. So I think there's a lot of internal self-work that you have to ask yourself if you're at that stage with pricing where it's not competitor research, it's all internal work. Really look into it, like in your childhood where you were denied something or um, that made you feel unworthy or, you know, you asked for something and you didn't get it. There's so much like baggage in our childhood, I think, that, that, that solidifies this kind of limiting belief. And then it really bleeds into the quantitative, you know, financial aspects of our business, which sucks which sucks so much. Um, so really um, find that source and then tackle it and then raise those prices because an ask, an ask to be for anything, for anything that they ask you, unless of course you want to do it pro bono, that's up to you, but really, really, really make it a practice. It's going to be really uncomfortable. I remember when I quoted my first five figure proposal uh, within months of starting my business actually. And because the client was very, uh, very like an ex, ex lawyer, like really, I knew she was a wealthy client and the work that was going to be with her account was huge. So I charged it and I almost was sick. I remember sending that email with the proposal and I wanted to throw up. <laughs> that's, how, that's how uncomfortable I was. I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to get this client. Within an hour, boom, contract signed, paid. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, also, I just want to point out, too, like, if you are struggling, hire somebody, <laughs> <laughs> hire somebody yeah. to help you get through that block. Because, I mean, now that I think about it, that's what I did. Right. So, like, it it took someone else to get me through that mental block that I couldn't charge. I couldn't charge, uh, you know, what I needed to make it happen. And so um, if you still struggle with that, hire somebody, you know, because 
sometimes it just takes you seeing that you can get it to now I have no problem telling people how much I charge and I have no problem with if they say, you know what, that's a little out of my budget, you know, that's fine. That means that we don't need to work together or that means maybe you need to wait until the next quarter when I do another free thing, you know, um, but hire somebody. And, and I say that because it worked for me. Pauline's clients, apparently. (laughs) And then also like with my husband, for instance, you know, he just had a big project that he had to shoot. And I mean, to the point where he had to travel and everything. And I'm the one that came up with the price for it because he was struggling with, okay, what do I charge these people? Like, I have no idea. And so I was like, okay, well, let's look at the mileage. Let's look at, you know, accommodations. Let's look at all of these different things to make sure that we are taking on a project, but it's not getting us into a hole, you know? Um, And so he was like, oh, like the price I gave him, he's like, I don't know what they're going to say with that. You know, (laughs) I don't know. You know, it's such a huge difference from what I usually charge. And I said, yeah, but usually you're not going out of state. You're not, you know, traveling around, you usually stay in, you know, right here in our city. And so um, he told the people and boom, they said, oh, that's fine. Go ahead and send over the invoice. And then he was going to do, because he was still thinking, you know, oh my gosh, it's a lot of money. He was like, okay, well, let's just do, um, the, let's break it down into three payments, you know, one before we start two, you know, when we get to the location and then three after the work is done, do you know, this client just gave him the whole thing in one swoop. And so I, I say that to say like, even though you are struggling internally with what you're, you're charging, you know, once you get to the point of actually charging, you know, the value of the services that you're providing, don't try to then backtrack (laughs) and break it down, you know, into payments or whatever, unless it's needed. Like maybe there is a client that's like, okay, you know what, can I do half now, half later, you know, and then you just have to evaluate that on a case by case basis. But, um, like he was going to talk himself out of money (laughs) before he even talked to them and seeing if it was affordable. So, um, you know, that was just another recent lesson that I've learned as well. Um, since we're on the topic of pricing, I think that is an excellent (laughs) way to end this, um, episode because I think we gave people enough to think about um, when it comes to their business. And Pauline, your insight has been invaluable because there were some things that you said that I have never even thought of. And now I'm over here turning my wheels (laughs) myself. Um, (laughs) But Pauline, if people wanted to contact you or get in contact with you, where could they find you? Yes. So I am at CEO Pauline Malubai and my Surname is M A L U B A Y because people always forget how to spell it. And um, across all platforms, LinkedIn, TikTok, Clubhouse, oh my God, all the things. I also have a podcast, How She Owns It. Um, and Tiffany, we need to get you on there once we once I restart. I'm on a hiatus at the moment because it's summer. So I interview female entrepreneurs about their journey and the lessons that they've learned. So that's what my How She Owns It podcast. And you can listen to that across all the things as well. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. And yes, I would love to be on because I have lessons by the (laughs) boatloads, all the mistakes that I have made. Um, I'm not going to say mistakes, all of the um, mistakes or feedback (laughs) Feedback feedback. that I have. (laughs) Right, right. All those things um, (laughs) that I have gone through, you know, with my business. And so I would love to be on. And I'm so glad that you decided to come on all the way from the UK. Yes. <laughs> um, that's super exciting. Um, hopefully I make it over there. But um, thank you so much, Pauline. And all of uh, Pauline's links and everything will be in the show notes. So if you didn't catch all of that, don't worry. Just click on the show notes and I'll have all of that there for you so you can connect with her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to moneytalkwitht.com. And while you're there, why not sign up for our newsletter so you'll never miss an episode? 
Talk to you soon.